Hi. Welcome to uh, Three Geeks Podcast. <laughs> Special Comic Con edition. My name's Dan. I'm sitting here with John Russo. Hi. How are you doing, Dan? And we're going to ask him some questions about his authorship on the United of the Living Dead. Um, also, what he's doing now. Um, first off, I want to say when I was 10 years old, I saw Return of the Living Dead because I had a really, really bad mm-hmm. babysitter. <laughs> I chased my mom around for like two weeks saying brains. <laughs> and it, Did she it, have any? No. Well, yes, she did, but I, I didn't <laughs> get any, sadly. But, uh... I mean, your mom wasn't an airhead or anything. No, like no, that. no, no, sir. And <laughs> <laughs> she's watching this now. Going, I'm just oh. joking. I always <laughs> joke. Um, so I saw at, at at your booth you you had you know checks from you know George Romero. Were you one of the only per- people that got paid for doing the Night of the Living Dead? No. Well, none of us got paid what we should have. We'd been ripped off for millions and millions of dollars. But those checks. Uh, they're Night of the Living Dead checks, and collectors pay big money for them. The ones made out to me went for $1,000 each to collectors, and uh, the ones prior to 1993 were destroyed because we didn't know they had any value. Turns out somebody collects everything, including celebrity checks. So the ones that I have there were written in 1993 for promotion of... 25th anniversary convention and the ones after 1993 were all well prior to that were all destroyed (coughs) excuse me and now the banks don't send them back anymore which makes them more valuable and when I'm at conventions I sell them for 60 bucks each and that's it but all the ones to the main cast and crew are gone collectors snatch those up right away gotcha that is cool. Was that your first script that you wrote? Uh, Night of the Living Dead was the first full-length screenplay that I had written. I always wanted to be a writer. I had written a couple of novels, and they weren't published. And I had written a one-act stage play based on the Dead Sea Scrolls and what was learned from them. And I never did anything with it. And then I got involved with a in the film business with George Romero and Russ Greiner and so on and, and uh, for the next couple of years my effort went toward uh, making dozens and dozens of TV commercials and industrial films and every kind of film educational films, political commercials and, and, and documentaries and that's how we learned our craft so a lot of that learning the craft of, of uh, of writing and storytelling for commercials and industrials actually honed and polished my skills to the point where I was able to probably do a better job writing Night of the Living Dead than I would have done before that. All right. What are you writing now? I'm always writing and usually I'm working on several things at once. I just finished an outline for a big novel called The Plague of the Living Dead which um, has some very unique ideas that fans are going to enjoy. I don't want to go into them yet because it's not published yet. But I have a a novel called Dealey Plaza, which is a historical novel that covers 40 years in the lives of its main characters as they work their way through the 40 years of mass violence that we've had in this country ever since the Kennedy assassination. So... I think it's a very important novel. It's available on Amazon, and it has 27 four- and five-star reviews already. People love this book and say they can't put it down. It should be made into a major movie or at least a miniseries, and who knows what will happen with it. But it's uh, maybe the best thing I've written. I say maybe because I've written some really, really good novels in the horror genre, like The Awakening which is my vampire novel, a big vampire novel. It's published some years ago in Living Things, which is a zombie novel, but a unique, all my stuff's unique. I try to keep it that way. Do you prefer writing novels or being like, you know, doing screenplays and different revisions to that? I have no preference. I mean, when I get excited about a screenplay, then I put my 
all into that. And uh, screenplays are a lot easier. They're only 90 pages or so, and uh, I can write them quickly. But that's kind of my thing. I'm, I'm a very fast. Mark Twain uh, averaged about 3,000 words a day when he was writing, and I do about the same. I'm not saying I'm Mark Twain, but you know our, write, our working methods seem to be similar, and he's one of my favorite writers. So, um, cool. I mean, people take months doing screenplays. I don't understand it. Uh, novels, you know, if it's a short novel, I can do it in three or four months. Well, I'll just figure it out. I mean, if you're doing uh, 3,000 words a day, then in a month you're going to have 90,000 words. You know, I don't do it that quick. I don't stick at it every day, all day long, because I have too many other interests and obligations. I mean, you know, I, have a, I do a lot of stuff including traveling to conventions and other events a, a lot. And have you had any other film roles besides the one zombie that gets stuck in the head? <laughs> I, d I never, uh, you know, I try to, to keep my work to behind the camera because that's hard enough and it requires a lot of concentration. And when I've had film roles, it's mostly because uh, somebody else wasn't there to do it. And I, I got enlisted myself or got enlisted gotcha. so I was a coroner in the majorettes and uh, I was a police officer in uh, 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 Santa Claus my Christmas horror <laughs> movie and like I'm playing but I'm playing Uncle John uh, in in my Uncle John is a zombie which I you know I wrote the script Gary Vincent my publisher is playing Uncle John one of my good friends, Sci-Fi, was playing my niece, and they bring me, they kept me hidden for 40 years and fed me good things to eat. <laughs> Do you know what kind of good things? Then they decided to bring me out of sort of a closet, not a gay closet, but a zombie closet, bring me out in public and advocate for zombie rights. And then it's pretty funny. It's got a lot of action, suspense, and humor in it. And eventually, a guy that runs a zombie hunting camp kidnaps me and he charges people a hundred grand each for the privilege of hunting me down and it all builds to a riotous climax. And does that have a, have a release date? Or? We're shooting it in November okay. and so it'll probably be out by spring but we don't know yet. We're not going to make a distribution deal till we have it finished or near finished. Nice. Or anything else you'd like to add, sir? That's it. If you, we have seven days left on an Indiegogo campaign, which is not designed to raise all the money. We have the money. We just want to have a little extra to bring some names into it. We already have some names. Debbie Rashawn's in it. Lloyd uh, Kaufman is, is in it. And uh, we want to get a couple other names in it. Nice. Go to the Indiegogo. Give this man money. Please. <laughs> well, thank you we very much. These. Thank you, sir. See you, Dan. Sure. Okay. You want to do, interview Gary? He can talk about a lot of sure. stuff. Sure. I'll tell him. I'll sound him up. That's cool.